Reflow's hybrid technology is perfectly suited to the creation of large amounts of water, such as floods or ocean surfaces. You start with the so-called core fluid to simulate the fluid's expansion and the main splashes. Once you are happy with the behavior and look of the core fluid, you add more and more details – surface ripples and waves, small splashes, foam and mist. All these elements are simulated in separate passes. The main idea is to use the already simulated parts and data and virtually create a new level on top of the existing simulation. The advantage of this split workflow is that you are able to focus on just one element of the simulation and fine-tune its final look, while the already existing parts are left untouched. This way, it is also possible to simulate some parts over a network. This applies for the creation of all secondary elements and meshes. One of these elements is a core fluid's ocean statistical spectral model, also known as displacement or just OSS. The displacement is applied to the core fluid surface and creates all the small waves you can see on an ocean. Reflow provides two fundamental methods for the creation of these waves. The first method uses a sequence of displacement maps. These maps can be loaded into your 3D program and used with a Reflow render kit or any other material. The special thing about these maps is that they are tileable. This way, it is possible to create an endless ocean surface. A second method is to apply the spectrum waves to the mesh. In this case, the information is baked to the mesh directly, including all splashes. To get you off to a good start, it is a good idea to show you the typical workflow for applying a fluid's displacement. For this purpose, we start with a very basic scene, just a calm surface inside a container. The scene uses a standard setup, which we introduced in the first hybrid or video lesson. Here, the global cell size is 0.1 and the container's volume mode is solid outside. The number of particles is not important here, because the displacement's level of detail does not depend on the core fluid's quality. All adjustments regarding the spectrum are controlled with the domain's appropriate panel. Also, the simulation does not need to be very long and 100 frames are enough. The next step is important. Once the simulation is finished, change the domain simulation mode to Cache. With this option, the core flood will not be simulated again, but the already existing data is read from the hard disk and shown in the viewport. Now it is safe to work on the displacement. For a first impression, the default values will be used. All you have to do is to change Calculate Displacement to Always. But as you can see, nothing has happened. There is no visual feedback. What we need is a preview. One common method is to create a mesh from a single frame and apply the displacement as a shader. Add a hybrid or mesh node, right click on it and choose Build. After a few seconds, the mesh appears. The shader panel provides everything you need for a preview. Just select Displacement from the Shader Type menu and switch the viewport shading mode to Flat or Smooth. Finally, hide the domain to get a better view of the mesh. Let's take a look at the mesh. The surface shows smaller waves and is rippled, but lacks all these fine structures you might have seen in rendered images. Maybe things get better when we add the waves to the mesh. To do this, select the Mesh node and set Use Displacement to Yes. Splash attenuation can be set to no here, because the core fluid does not have any splashes. It is also important to disable the shader. A look at the viewport caption shows that the mesh has about 58,000 polygons. Recreate the mesh. At the current state, the object has roughly 850,000 polygons and the displacement is part of the mesh, but the look has not changed. Before we start to work on the parameters, we should address another issue, the mirror displacement. So far, 
the domain's displacement has been added to the mesh's top and bottom and created a huge amount of unnecessary polygons. But in most cases, only a flat surface with open boundaries is needed. To get this look, Reflow's hybrid mesh offers the Open Boundaries parameter. When this option is set to Yes, the domain's viewport icon works like a clipping plane. Everything below and outside this plane will be cut. With this option active, the number of polygons has nearly been halved. It is also possible to resize a plane with a scale tool, but please be careful here, because this action affects the number of repetitions of the displacement. When you halve the plane size, you will get roughly four times more polygons, because the number of waves will be doubled in each direction. Then, the displacement is applied to a smaller area, and therefore more polygons are required to match the fine details. Just on a side note, the domain's icon position does not affect the fluid simulation. Currently, the mesh look is neither satisfying nor exciting. To change this, the domain node provides a wide variety of settings, and we want to go through the most important ones with you. If you have worked with Rewave before, you might have seen that this tool shares many settings with the domain's OSS panel. Add a surface node, and apply an OSS deformer with a right click on the node. Apply the smooth shading mode to see the waves. The analogy between the parameters allows you to use Rewave for the creation of fast previews. There are only a few settings you have to adjust. The dimension of the surface has to match the scale you are using for the domain. Polygon size has to be decreased to get a sufficient amount of details. A value of 0.01 or 0.02 works well. Now you can start testing. Time factor is used to decelerate or accelerate the global motion of the waves. With values greater than 1, the wave speed increases. Quality is not only responsible for the spectrum's level of detail, but has another function. It is also the displacement map size in pixels. A quality value of 2048 creates a squared image map with exactly the same size. Vertical scale determines the wave's height and should be increased if the surface is too flat. Dimension defines the displacement scale. When you enter a value of 20, for example, the surface looks as if it has a size of 20 by 20 meters. The ocean segment is very small and there are hardly any details. When dimension is very large, you most probably have to increase time factor to get some visible motion. Wind speed is another parameter that adds detail to the surface. With zero, there won't be any waves at all, and the surface is totally flat. Higher settings create more and more ripples. With choppiness, you get these nice sharp wave crests, but please avoid high values because they lead to polygon intersections. Choppiness also strongly depends on the dimension parameter.
a different initial wave distribution can be achieved with seed. Each new value creates a new look. If you want to keep the displacement's current dimension, but need more detail, then you can decrease min wavelength. When this parameter is being changed, you might have to readjust vertical scale, wind speed and choppiness as well. Sometimes a surface lacks details, even if its dimension is very large or min wavelength is very small. In situations like that, the level of detail can be increased simply by repeating the wave patterns. A value of 2 is sufficient in most cases. Once you're happy with the result, transfer the values to the domain's OSS panel. So far, we've only worked the single frames. To finally apply the settings to the entire simulation range, the displacement has to be created for all frames. For this reason, the domain has been set to cache because this part should not be simulated again. We only want to focus on the spectrum waves. Check if Calculate Displacement is set to Always, Activate the Mesh, Reset and Simulate. Both Displacement and Mesh can be created in separate steps, but it is also okay to do everything in a single pass. In this step of the tutorial, a Maxwell preview is created. For this purpose, the domain and all the other supporting nodes must be made invisible to Maxwell. The mesh should be the only visible element. From the mesh nodes Maxwell render panel, the water ocean material is chosen. At this stage, the quality of the render looks a little bit disappointing. A very common way to enhance contrast in colors is to put a plane beneath the mesh. Add a plane node, rescale it to your needs and move it below the mesh. When you hit the fire button again, you will see a much better result. Finally, modify the Maxwell settings to your needs and start the preview. Until now, we have only worked with a calm ocean surface, but the hybrid solver is well known for its impressive and detailed splashes. How do these splashes affect the displacement and finally the mesh? The answer will be given in a separate tutorial.
One feature that has not been addressed so far is the displacement's whitecaps channel. Whitecaps are foamy areas at the crests of waves, and they occur when waves from different directions collide. When you activate this feature, you will not see anything, unless you have applied the displacement shader to the mesh. There, you can find a white caps threshold parameter. With higher values, you will see more and more of the white caps until the entire surface is almost completely covered. The white caps information is embedded in the displacement maps as an alpha channel. The threshold value controls the channel's opacity. Please bear in mind that the white caps are something like a post effect and not a feature of the displacement itself. This means that you cannot apply the white caps to the geometry of the mesh or its channels, for example as a vertex map. Also, the threshold value will not be written to the maps or the mesh, because this parameter is only meant to be used inside Reflow. If you want to create a render in Reflow, the whitecaps channel must be added to a maximum material, which has to be applied to the mesh. In 3D or compositing applications, the workflow for adding whitecaps is completely different from Reflow, and we recommend taking a look at your software's documentation for more information regarding how to handle alpha channels.